Okay, uh, sorry about that. All right, tonight, Lord willing, uh, new man, welcome. We'll take a look at uh, another Bible study. Uh, interested in looking into the uh, the end. Now we've talked about this in the past. Uh, we we'll just try to you know recap or review, you know, elaborate a little more on the timing of the end. What do you suppose the end is? When we talk about the end, as we see it in the Bible, is God talking about the very last day of this world's existence? You know, that's the way that I used to understand uh, the end. But today, I think by God's grace, we begin to see something that's uh, quite different from what we, uh, we once learned. First of all, enduring to the end. Does this have to do with the church going through the great tribulation? The believers, the elect, they having to endure unto the end. And I think we'll see later on the end there is the time when God began to unseal the Bible. Okay, so let's take a look at Matthew 24, verse 3. As he sat upon the Mount of Olives... The disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Now, you know what's interesting here is that the sign of the coming of the Son of Man. This, again, I think that's something that... Uh, would you mind holding, uh, Newman? Because we're going through a live study. We'll open uh, after the study for... Uh, general uh, conversation but if you have something related to the verses that I'm posting well then that's fine okay and you can post uh, a question if you have it directly on the screen so you can put your hand down for now uh, if you don't mind as I said uh, after the study we'll, uh, we'll open for a general uh, discussion Matthew 24 verse 3 what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Now keep in mind that even though God is talking about the world here, that's, uh, that ultimately, you know, God speaks in parables. Okay, no problem. God speaks in parables. Chosen right. Could the end be both the end of the church as well as the end of this literal earth? Although they would both be at different times. The principle of the end covering both the literal dimension and well that's interesting that's a very um, uh, good statement but you see the problem with that uh, at least for me is that I can't find verses in the Bible that would point to the fact that the end relates to the the physical uh, at least not the timing of it and I'm not saying that God would not uh, destroy the world or bring the end but as far as the timing of it, uh, I don't think we can know the exact timing of it. And certainly, it's going to be very difficult to relate verses in the Bible to the very last day. Now, I see this happening today, by the way. There are those that, at first, they were looking at Babylon as being the church. Uh, that judgment beginning at the house of God is judgment coming on the whole church. And now judgment has transitioned to the rest of the world. And that, I don't think we can get the Bible to support. Uh, and then what happens is that now they're, they're going to see verses in the Bible and they're going to try to separate the spiritual from the literal. That's going to be very, very hard to do. But when we understand that, we, we, that God is speaking in parables and so the, uh, the end there that's in view is the end of the, the age, the end of the, uh, the body itself, the end of the church age. But I'll see if I can uh, share some verses, Lord willing, to, to try and support uh, this uh, teaching. Now, if we look at, for example, in Matthew 24, verse 3, God here is, first of all, talking about the end of the world. Now, we know the world spiritually. God refers to the church as the world, the earth, uh, the city, the nations, the people. There again, you know, it's, we, we have to look at how these verses relate to the church, to the body of Christ. The moment we try to transition some of these verses to the uh, the world that is outside of Christianity, 
then uh, it becomes very difficult to relate some of these verses. Okay, now Matthew 24, verse 4, just as, let's see, you go ahead and post that. Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Now, take a look at the question again in verse 3. What is the sign of thy coming and of the end of the age, the end of the world? And the very first response is, Take heed that no man deceive you. Why? Well, because I think, uh, Lord willing, the Bible is teaching that the sign of the Son of Man, the sign of uh, Christ, is the fact that the church has come into the great tribulation and tribulation has everything to do with deception why well because god is going to allow false prophets he allows satan to take his seat in the temple he is ruling antichrist or ruling in tribulation that is a sign of the son of man right it's the fact that uh, deception is already here and many people are going to be deceived unless God would uh, redeem them, that is, bring them out of Babylon. Many shall come in my name. There's a key phrase, I believe. It's all about those that are coming in the name of Christ. So there again, I don't think the world can be in view because the world, uh, for the most part, uh, is not interested in the name of Christ. Yeah, some may profess, uh, you know, some degree of belief, but in reality, I think when we read about the name of Christ, it is uh, those that are uh, coming to bring the gospel, professing Christians, right? Many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Matthew 24, verse 6. Ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, see that ye be not troubled. All these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet okay so first we have the church coming into the great tribulation that i propose is a sign of his coming the fact that he is already here in judgment right and we'll see that uh, hopefully uh, in a few minutes matthew 24 verse 13 but he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved what does it mean to endure unto the end what does it mean to endure does this mean that uh, even though God is bringing about uh, confusion today uh, animosity in the in the kingdom in the body uh, you and I we have to patiently endure we have to go through we have to take the insult no no again you know keep in mind that this is a spiritual revelation God speaks in parables and salvation is always passive on the part of the elect those who uh, receive it but it is active on the part of God the idea of enduring unto the end again I believe has to do with the believers going through the great tribulation that's the time when they were chastised and they were not even aware of it you and I Lord willing uh, when the church came into the Great Tribulation, <clears throat> they could not have understood because the Bible says, But of that day and hour knoweth no man. And the day and the hour is the Great Tribulation that transitions into the revelation of Christ. It's not until after the Tribulation that God now began to unseal the Bible <clears throat> so that the believers would see, they understand time and judgment. They realize that uh, Christ had already been revealed spiritually and that God was already judging the church in tribulation. Notice in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 7, If ye endure chastening, how long will the Lord holy and true? You see, uh, the, the church typified by the rich man was not feeding the flock. The church was not being faithful to the whole counsel of God. And therefore, God is judging the church today and blinding the unsaved in the body. And at the same time, he is unsealing the Bible so that the believers, they, uh, they understand the nature of today's judgment. So they endured. They endured the tribulation. Even though they were not aware of it, God was aware of it. They were told to watch. They could not watch because a thief comes in the night. 
the thieves or the uh, the false prophets, the locusts, <clears throat> they come with a different gospel, with a deceptive gospel. That's why we read earlier, take heed that no man deceive you. Characteristic of the day of the Lord is all about false prophets and false Christ coming with signs and wonders. And when I say signs and wonders, I'm not talking about supernatural activities. The Bible does, uh, defines signs and wonders as uh, sharing a different gospel. Okay, so if ye endure chastening, notice also in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 6, Christ has a son over his own house, whose house we are, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. There again, the believers, they had to endure. They had to go through the tribulation. And then we read about God cutting the day short, which becomes the end of that tribulation. That would have been the end. He that overcometh, Revelation 2.26, and keepeth my works unto the end. Again, I don't think we can look at a, an active participation and keeping or being faithful to the commandments of God because that would be a work. And Christ has already done the work on behalf of the elect. So they keep the word of God. They keep the works in the sense that Christ already kept the work on their behalf. So they, the believers, they, they cannot be harmed by the tribulation. Even though they, they were subject to it, they went through the fire as God was refining them, ultimately God would begin to uh, redeem them. Jacob's trouble, but he would be saved out of it. And Matthew 24, verse 13, uh, those who endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. I don't think we can look at the word save here in the context of individual salvation, right? We have to read that in the light of the whole Bible. The believers coming out of Babylon, that is deliverance it is salvation it is a collective salvation separation of wheat and tares it had to come at a specific time the appointed time so those who endured they are saved in other words they come out they are redeemed but they already belong to the kingdom to the body of Christ we see the same thing here in Daniel chapter 11 verse 35 some of them of understanding shall fall to try them. When did that happen? Is this happening today? Those that are saying that May 21 was when judgment began, is that the case? Or is this talking again about the Great Tribulation? The believers, they were tried. They went through the fire to purge them, to make them white, even to the time of the end. Not the very last day, but rather the end of the age. Take heed that no man deceive you. Matthew 24, verse 14. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Now there was a time when I thought <clears throat> that this was talking about the very last day. Uh, chosen by grace mentioned earlier, is it possible that there could be two winds in view? Well, I'd like to think so, but again, uh, it, it's going to be very, very difficult to try to now go through the Bible and determine which one is literal and which one is, is spiritual. I don't think it can be done. That's why, you know, Lord willing, we try to relate to what we understand the Bible to be teaching as we compare spiritual with spiritual. And everything is pointing to the fact that the end is the revelation of Christ. After the tribulation of those days, uh, that's the tribulation that was cut short, not the one that ended on May 21, as some would have us to believe. But it was cut short when God began the separation of wheat and tares. Okay, so this gospel of the kingdom, well, the gospel has always been going out, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. Is that a fair, uh, fair statement to make? I know in the past, uh, those that were teaching May 21 as Judgment Day, they look at this verse and they say, Ah, you see, this verse would be the fulfillment of when Family Radio and 
uh, the light ministries, that they're going into all the world with the gospel, proclaiming that May 21 is the end, and then the end would come. Well, again, how can that be? And, and then some might say, well, uh, many have heard the gospel for the first time. The gospel has been around for pretty much about, what, 2,000 years? Many people, you know, you have uh, certain countries, you have a church in every corner of the land. Now, people have different uh, levels of understanding or knowledge, but everyone has heard the gospel. Everyone has been subject. They've been exposed to the fact that uh, we are sinners and God created the world and the time would come when God would uh, judge, bring judgment on the world. All of that has already been taught. The only thing that we didn't understand until today by God's grace is the fact that this judgment would not uh, be talking about the last day, the very last day, but rather God's judgment on Christendom, on Babylon, the wickedness. God, it seems, he was more concerned uh, with the wickedness that was going on in the church itself. So God here, I believe, he is recapping in Matthew 24, verse 14. He's telling them about the abomination of desolation, False prophets, false Christ shall arise with signs and wonders. And then he goes back to say, well, this gospel is going to be preached into all the world. That is the, the New Testament era. And then the end would come. It's the same end. It's not a different uh, period of time, right? So I think we have to read that in the light of the whole Bible. Okay, any questions so far? We're looking at the end as it relates to the the chastening of the elect the fact that God was uh, uh, he was hiding his face for a moment at the time when the false prophets began to multiply in the body of Christ so they had to endure unto the end let's take a look at uh, a couple of verses here relating to the sign of the Son of Man there's a separate study on this that I offered uh, on the Berean Studies uh, website called sign of the Son of Man um, New Fresh writes are we told not to ask ask what a que well a question related to the study if you have a question uh, re related to the verses that I just posted uh, you can certainly raise your hand or put something on the screen well, that's what we're trying to determine here. Uh, I, I just went through the first section showing, first of all, that those who endure unto the end, enduring has to do with the chastening of the elect. They were brought through the fire. We read about the third part going through the fire. I will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name. And then in Revelation chapter 6 we read, how long, O oh Lord? That's the believers. Now, even though actively they're not aware of the fact that they were calling on the name of the Lord, but God, the Holy Spirit, makes intercession for them. God realized that they were in tribulation, and He had obligated Himself to redeem them, to bring back their captivity. That makes sense? Okay, but uh, we'll, we can elaborate a little more on that uh, later on. The sign of the Son of Man. In the same context here we read Matthew 12 verse 38 Then certain of the scribes uh, Certain of the scribes I'll see you hi, welcome uh, Certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered saying Master we would see a sign from thee But he answered and said An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign And that didn't post Hold on one second uh, Chosen by grace writes, the end of chastening, the end of one's life, the end of the earth. The verse can apply to all the... No. You see, I, I've heard this argument uh, having to do with the end of one's life. Well, how can that be? Yeah, I don't think we can get the Bible to support that. Because everything about the end has a time frame, a time reference. And that time, as I pointed out earlier, is the great tribulation, the day of the Lord. In that day, again and again, we go through the Bible, we read, In that day, it shall come to pass. In that day. What day? The end of one's life? The time when someone dies? No. You, you, again, you see, that's... Uh, we don't want to go through the Bible trying to make verses say something that 
uh, perhaps we would like or uh, we might understand from a different uh, perspective without uh, allowing the Bible to define the terms, right? So God has to define the terms. In that day, Gregory, hi, welcome. In that day, chastening has nothing to do, Lord willing, uh, with the uh, the chastening that you might go through. Yeah, certainly, you know, there's a moral aspect to it. Uh, God could chastise someone in the sense that uh, he brings a hardship, a financial uh, hardship uh, on someone and, and as a way of correcting them. But that's not spiritual. The spiritual, I believe, has to do with how this relates to what's going on in the kingdom. The chastening, the primary chastening, uh, chastening I believe that's in view, is the fact that the elect had to endure tribulation in a time when Antichrist were ruling. That's where we find the mind of Christ, I propose. That's where we find the gospel. That's the important aspect of the gospel that we want to relate to, especially today when God is allowing Antichrist, false prophets who come in the name of Christ, and they, a lot of times, they have a gospel that is very sincere. They know a whole lot, even about the end of the church age. But in reality, uh, unless God is uh, bringing revelation to them, they too, they could be deceived if God is not bringing them out of Babylon. If they're not understanding the nature of God's judgment today. So the end of the chastening, I propose, is the end of the, the great tribulation, the tribulation that was cut short. Now, uh, Matthew 12, verse 39, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. There shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonah. So we search the Bible. We search. What is the sign of his coming? Okay. Uh, and then we read in verse 39, But he answered and said unto them, An evil... Did I post that already? I think I did. Uh, hold on one second. We search the Bible, and we see, for example, in uh, Matthew chapter 12, verse 40, As Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Now, who did Jonas typify? Who was he a picture of when he was in the belly of the fish? Anyone? As Jonas was three days and three nights in a whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Yeah, exactly, Althea. So he was typifying Christ, but not just Christ going to the cross, although that too, I think, could be in view. The fact that he was three days and three nights, well, I don't think we can actually pinpoint the exact days that Christ was uh, physically in the grave. Yeah. Uh, so that's why, uh, you know, even though historically that was the starting point, but the more important aspect of it is the body of Christ. It is the elect, as Althea pointed out here. You see, just as Jonah was three days and three nights, the body of Christ coming into the Great Tribulation, that body was killed. Remember the two witnesses, when they shall have finished their testimony, and the killing of that body is the fact that God had now, uh, he allows the, the elect to be three days and three nights. And number three, they're both pointing to, uh, it could uh, relate to salvation or judgment. This context, I believe it is judgment. So the body of Christ was destroyed in tribulation. And that is a sign of the Son of Man. Does that make sense? But again, the, the believers would not have understood this before it happened. So it has to be in hindsight. God now, he is uh, unsealing the Bible so that now they see, they, they see first of all that the sign of the, the sign of the Son of Man was relating to the fact that the two witnesses had been killed. Right? The body of Christ was in the grave and then the two witnesses were resurrected. They stood upon their feet after the uh, the three and a half days we read uh, is another uh, figure that God uses in the book of Revelation John chapter 2 verse 19 
I'm sorry, verse 18. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? Now keep in mind, even though they're asking for uh, something tangible, something literal, they're thinking the very last day. That's not uh, uncommon. Uh, those who come to Christ, they raise questions, but Christ is always going to answer them how? The way that they, they want to be uh, understood, the way that they, they believe that the gospel is... Uh, is to be seen or is he going to relate to them on the spiritual level right remember the example when Mary came to him uh, in Cana of Galilee they have no wine uh, he could have said alright well then uh, give me a minute I'm going to see if I can make some wine no he said woman what have I to do with thee mine hour is not yet come and so the wine spiritually it had to do with the shed blood of Christ and yet he still had to go to the cross. So he responds in a parable. Same thing with the man that says, let me go first, uh, first go and bury my father. And he says, no, let the dead bury the dead. Again, parabolic language. So when we see here uh, in uh, verse 18, what sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? And he answered and said unto them, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Which temple was he talking about? The physical temple over there in Jerusalem? Well, that's what they thought, right? That's what they thought because they're not relating to the spiritual. But he spake of the temple of his body. Well, yeah, physically he was killed. His body was put in the grave. Spiritually, he endured the wrath of God on behalf of the elect. But also, in tribulation, this body of Christ had been destroyed. The church, the elect, coming into the great tribulation, the two witnesses killed. That body was destroyed. That temple was destroyed. So can you see how the destruction of that temple spiritually was pointing to the sign that they were asking for? It's the sign of the prophet Jonah. Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. And the Son of Man also was in the belly, uh, I'm sorry, was in the heart of the earth. And the heart of the earth there, I think, spiritually is pointing to the church. Okay, uh, here's another uh, aspect of the sign of the Son of Man, which I think has to do with uh, sharing the gospel after the tribulation. So there is a sign, I think, uh, on the one hand that points to the death of the two witnesses. And then also... Uh, one, I think it has to do with uh, God now allowing the, the gospel to be uh, spread with the judgment message of Babylon is fallen. As Jonas was assigned unto the Ninevites, Luke chapter 11, verse 30, uh, so shall the Son of Man be to this generation. Well, Jonah went to preach. He was not uh, you know, in the belly of the fish all the time. After that, he was sent to the city of Nineveh. The city of Nineveh that repented and became saved, I think, spiritually, was pointing to the elect, those who repent. They come out of Babylon. They repented because they repented. God had mercy on them and did not destroy them there. Well, that's what's happening today, I believe, to the elect. This message is coming. Uh, Babylon has fallen, come out of my people. <clears throat> and then... Uh, and that's why we read further on. I'm not sure if I have these verses here. That the men of Nineveh. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Um, I don't know. For some reason, these verses are coming up twice on my end here. Bear with me one second. Is Luke chapter 11, verse 32 on the screen? Where it says, The men of Nineveh shall rise up in a judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonas. That should be on there, right? <clears throat> uh, Jonas was a sign unto the Ninevites, so the Son of Man shall be to this generation. A part of it is, okay, well, let me try to, okay, all right, all right, I see what happened. I just got to get the second part. Thanks. Yeah, I posted the, uh, the first part. The latter part here, for they repented at the preaching of Jonas, and behold, a greater than Jonas is here. And uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 19, we reach, uh, I'm sorry, we read about uh, Christ. 
by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. That's what happened before the flood. Christ in the person of Noah was preaching to the spirits in prison. So it's really Christ preaching through Noah, right? Just as today, Christ is preaching through the, the elect. Babylon has fallen, come out over my people. Okay, so that's <clears throat> that's another element of uh, the sign of the Son of Man, which uh, perhaps some other time we can spend uh, some additional time looking into some of these verses. And as I mentioned before, a study called Sign of the Son of Man is offered for uh, consideration. Now, after the tribulation, now keep in mind, I know if we're looking at the calendar, I've said again and again that I, I do believe that uh, the calendar is accurate because it's in the Bible. We see a lot of information that, Lord willing, we, we have to try and take into consideration. But if we're looking at the, the tribulation as the entire 23 years and not realize that at some point God had cut it short so that the elect would come out of Babylon, right? Except the days would be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. And that salvation there again, as I pointed out, I think it has to do with the redeeming of the body. The redemption of the body. Matthew 24, verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. The word, uh, actually, the, this should really read, uh, with the tribulation of those days. In other words, with the judgment on Babylon, the church itself, that began with the tribulation, God now transitions. He, uh, we come into the time when God uh, steps in, He intervenes, and now He begins to separate the wheat from the tares. So with the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven. What is that talking about? What is the sun, moon, and stars that are in view there? Is that talking about the elect? Uh, just to point something else up here, Matthew 24, verse 22. Except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. That's the salvation I propose that is in view. A time of Jacob's trouble. That's the great tribulation. The church had to come into the great tribulation, but Jacob, that is the elect, Jacob would be saved out of it as God separates the wheat from the tares. So that salvation there is one of uh, deliverance, right, I believe, redemption. Except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. <clears throat> but for the elect's sake, those days should be shortened. So this would be after the tribulation. Whereas today, if we take this tribulation to May 21 and say, well, <clears throat> after the tribulation is May 21, well, then what happened prior to that? Wasn't that judgment on the church? How many judgments are there? Is there a judgment on the church and then a judgment on the world? Or is it one judgment on Babylon itself, right? The collective body. Um... What about Matthew 24, verse 30? And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man. Now this is why uh, I was mentioning earlier that the sign of the Son of Man. First of all, today, I think in hindsight, the believers, they realized that the two witnesses had been killed. They could not have known that, I, <clears throat> I propose, at the time when it was happening. Why? Well, because God had not yet unsealed the Bible. But today... They realize that, yeah, the two witnesses have been killed. Uh, the elect had to endure tribulation, and then the end would come. And the end, I believe, has come. And now also the sign of the Son of Man is the fact that Babylon has fallen, come out of my people. So we see both the, uh, the judgment aspect of uh, the sign of the Son of Man as well as the salvation. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, verse 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds. Is this the last day? Now keep in mind again, God is speaking in what? In riddles, in parables. Who are the angels? Is this talking about celestial bodies? 
at the end of the world that somehow they are going to uh, go through the world and then just rapture individually believers <clears throat> can we be sure of that no I, I don't think we can but when we understand how these relate spiritually well then we see how uh, these verses are uh, being fulfilled today right the angels are the messengers and that includes you and I if we share the gospel we come in the name of Christ God is uh, first of all he uses the wicked the unsaved in the body they too they gather unto the burning but the believers are gathered into the barn I think we're gonna see this in another verse so now God is separating he is gathering the elect first they were scattered in tribulation and now God is causing them to come out of Babylon that's the gathering the collective gathering or the separation. Um, Jeremiah 32, verse 37. Behold, I will gather them out of all countries whither I have driven them in mine anger. You see, the, tri uh, the great tribulation was the fact that God was angry with the body. That's his anger. The days come, saith the Lord, that I will send a famine in the land. So God allowed a famine, right, when he uh, let the locusts loose. So that now they would uh, begin to bring a destructive gospel. Those who listen to it and they're taken by it, well, they are being judged of God, right? So God drove the church in anger. And then we read, uh, and I will bring them again unto this place. In other words, they would, uh, uh, Christ would redeem. He would uh, unseal the Bible to them so that they are not deceived. They're not destroyed by the false prophets. Matthew chapter 13, verse 30. Let both grow together until the harvest. The harvest is the end of the world. Remember that? And the end of the world, as I offered before, is not talking about the very last day, but the end of the tribulation that was cut short. The harvest is the end of the world. So it's at the end of the age that God now is allowing the, uh, the messengers, the angels, to go through and separate how through the Word of God God is blinding on, on the one hand or for the most part but also uh, at the same time he is uh, unsealing or redeeming of the elect that have been scattered in tribulation let both grow until the harvest and in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them I've thought about this before and someone pointed out to me that those that are gathering the wicked unto the burning that could not be the elect right God is also using the the unsaved the locusts the thieves the scorpions they gather the unsaved unto the burning because God is allowing the church to destroy itself right that makes sense so they gather themselves, how? Through a destructive gospel. Those that are taken by it, there's no hope, there's no um, possibility of them coming out of Babylon unless God had uh, planned to redeem them so that at some point in time they would begin to understand uh, the judgment. So gather ye first the tares, bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. So the believers are, are gathered as... Uh, they hear the message of judgment okay let's see just a couple of more sections to go I'll, I'll see if I can try and speed it up so that the study uh, is not too long let's look at the uh, the end as it relates to the death of of the church the death of Babylon <clears throat> uh, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God and this is another area I think that many people uh, they, they look at that and they say well judgment begins with the whole church and then those who do not obey the gospel well that's the outside world that's what I used to think right that's what I used to believe until by God's grace I began to look at the phrase those that obey not the gospel and see how it had to do with the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the wicked that are in the church, inside the body itself, not outside. And if that's the case, well then this makes sense because when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord. 
the believers going through the great tribulation is chastisement, is the judgment on on the collective body. They were uh, they were judged <clears throat> first of all because God allowed the unsaved, the wicked, to dominate prior to the unsealing of the Bible. Now they were judged in Christ, but they had to endure that aspect of the tribulation. So judgment begins with them, with the fact that God allowed them to go through this time, and then it transitioned to the rest of the church, not the outside world, right? To the rest of the church. These are the ones who do not obey the gospel. They're not relating to the whole counsel of God. They're, not, they're only trusting in what they believe the Bible to be teaching. Yet they are the ones who come in the name of Christ and, and profess that somehow they, they relate to uh, the name itself, the men of renown. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. What well, we saw earlier, I offered here that the, the tares are gathered to be burned. So the end, as it relates to the wicked, is the fact that they come under the wrath of God. They come under the judgment of God and they are burned in the fire. They're cast into the second, uh, the, the lake of fire, which is the second death. Uh, same thing, 2 Corinthians 11:15. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, now notice here, whose end shall be according to their works. Ministers of righteousness, these are the ones that are in the body of Christ, or at least they were corporately, right, prior to, to the end. So there again, I think we see that the end that's in view is relating to the people of God. Amos chapter 8, verse 2. Uh, and I said, a basket of summer fruit... Then said the Lord unto me, The end is come upon my people of Israel. So how can we make uh, you know, verses in the Bible tie to what's going on outside the church? Right? The end is come upon my people. Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 13. O thou that dwellest upon many waters, abundant in treasures, thine end is come. Now who is, it the, who is the one that dwells upon many waters? We read about the waters in the book of Revelation, right? So there again, I think if we search the Bible, Lord willing, we'll see that it's talking about Babylon. Uh, Lamentations 4, verse 18. They hunt our steps that we cannot go in our streets. Our end is near. Lamentations of Jeremiah looking at uh, the destructive nature of, uh, of God's judgment on the church, on Babylon. And the fact that the believers, they too, they were subject to, to this time. Our end is come. Ezekiel 7, verse 2. Also thou, son of man, thus saith the Lord God, unto the land of Israel. There it is again, the land of Israel. An end, the end is come upon the four corners of the land. Now sometimes, you know, we read about the four corners of the land or the earth. And there again, I think we might uh, be tempted to think that God is talking about the outside world. Whereas parabolically or spiritually, I think God is using the, uh, uh, the four corners to point to the entire kingdom, right? The church itself. Now the end, Ezekiel 7 verse 3, the end, now is the end come upon thee, and I will send mine anger upon thee. I saw this earlier, right? The, the anger of God. God brings judgment to to Babylon, primarily through the famine of, of hearing. Uh, Ezekiel 7 verse 6, An end is come, the end is come. It watcheth for thee, behold, it is come. Okay, and uh, just moving right along here. If you have any questions, uh, I'll, I'll be more than happy to look at uh, your questions. I'm trying to uh, share some of these verses and then uh, if you want to relate to them, certainly, yeah, you can raise your hand or post something in the text. If not, uh, you can hold off, uh, and at the end of the study, we can uh, entertain any questions there. The appointed time. So there had to come a specific time when that end would, would be. 
O son of man, for at the time of the end shall the vision be. And the vision there, I think, is relating to whom? The vision that Daniel saw, and ultimately the vision is yet for an appointed time. God would unseal the Bible to the elect so that they come out of Babylon. For at the time appointed, Daniel chapter 8, verse 19, the end shall be. Not the very last day. That's what I think most of us, including myself, uh, used to relate to. Daniel 12, verse 4. O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. I'm not going to look at the uh, too much of this now, but knowledge increasing, that could uh, be twofold. It is... Uh, the knowledge, the ungodly knowledge of the wicked, the fact that wickedness multiplies in the body, that causes God's wrath to come on the body. Knowledge is increasing, not the knowledge unto Christ, but the ungodly knowledge of the wicked. So in other words, the abomination of desolation. And now we know because from the rest of the Bible that God also speaks of the believers receiving understanding. So there too, as they come out of Babylon, God unseals the Bible knowledge increases there so they they receive uh, revelation Habakkuk 2 verse 3 the vision is yet for an appointed time but at the end it shall speak at the end it shall speak Matthew chapter 10 verse 19 but when they deliver you up and to be delivered up I think is a language of what tribulation right the time when the, the, the two witnesses are killed uh, they are beaten, the believers are beaten in the synagogue, not physically or literally, but the fact that God was hiding his face from them. When they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour. What hour is that? That talking about the very last day? No. The day and the hour, the day of the Lord, the hour of his judgment the great tribulation and revelation of Christ. So they receive the word to speak in the same hour. Why? Well, because after the tribulation of those days, the sun is darkened and God now begins the process of separation. <clears throat> Luke chapter 12, verse 12, For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what ye are to speak. Same thing here in Luke chapter 21, verse 15. I will give you a mouth of wisdom which all your adversaries who are the adversaries by the way who are the enemies we read, uh, we read about the enemies or the adversaries is that talking about the outside world those that have nothing to do with Christianity or the kingdom of God there again something that you know Lord willing we have to patiently I'll go through the Bible and allow God to define the terms. A man's foes will be they of his own household. In other words, the enemy is inside the church. The enemy is within. Exactly, Green Eyes. The enemy is in the church. God's enemies, those who trouble the body, right? They trouble the body. They bring a destructive gospel. They, they bring a false gospel. And, and of course, if they're bringing a false gospel, they are enemies of Christ. They're not relating to the whole counsel of God. And, and they, they silence, they destroy the elect through their lies. Again and again, God speaks of a lying tongue. <clears throat> so these are the ones that God, I believe, is judging today as he casts them out. He separates them so that they go into deeper and deeper apostasy. So uh, your adversary shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. And then finally, uh, one last quick section to read here uh, the end as it relates to the revelation of Christ Luke chapter 17 verse 30 even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed what day is that well the day and the hour but of that day and hour knoweth no man church had no idea that it had come into the great tribulation that's the day I believe that's the hour the same hour the same day God cuts the tribulation short and he transitions into the judgment as well as the redemption of the church, of the body. Babylon has fallen, come out of my people. 
So, in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Now again, we, we, if we read this verse on the surface and we isolate it from the rest of the Bible, we simply read the, uh, the word revealed here, we might think that this is talking about the very last day. Well, no. Who is the Word of God? Christ is the Word of God, isn't He? Today, as God is unsealing the Bible, it is Christ who is being revealed. Does that make sense? So that's the day when the Son of Man is revealed. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. That's the tribulation, I propose, right? The abomination of desolation. And then comes the end. Those who endure unto the end, they would be redeemed. Amos chapter 8, verse 11. Behold, the days come. There again, that's the day of the Lord. It is plural. It's not just one a last day, but rather uh, the tribulation itself, as well as uh, the revelation of Christ. So, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will send a famine in the land. That's the mechanism, I believe, that God is using to judge the church. It is a famine of hearing. Now, the locusts, they bring a destructive gospel. And there's no uh, blessing in that gospel. So, of course, they can't hear the message unto salvation. Luke chapter 18, verse 8. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith. That is Christ on the earth. Well, that makes sense because the night cometh when no man can work. We read elsewhere. The night again, I think, is a reference to the great tribulation and the uh, the judgment of God on Babylon. So if no man can work, then now Christ, uh, where is faith? Other than the fact that uh, we see it in the lives of uh, perhaps some of the uh, the elect as God unseals the Bible to them so that they understand time and judgment. But as far as the unsaved body, the sun, moon, and stars, they're darkened. They're, they're not giving any, uh, any, any lights at a time when God is judging Babylon. And then the same thing here, uh, finally. Let's see, is that the last verse? No, just a couple more verses. The mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he will now let it, will let until he be taken out of the way or out of the midst. 2 Thessalonians 2 8, and then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume. Now, notice here that God says that the wicked would be revealed. Well, that, that's the unsaved body, right? That's Satan who heads up the, uh, the unsaved world, the unsaved body. But we don't, we don't expect or anticipate a, a, a literal a revelation, do we? Well, why would we think that when we read about the day when the Son of Man is revealed, that that had to be the very last day? So, the wicked also, the wicked is revealed how? Through the Bible. You know, the more that we understand today, time and judgment, we see the wickedness of the church, right? The, the elect, they would uh, understand uh, the fact that God is judging the, uh, the body. Okay, and finally... Uh, verse 9 even him whose coming is after or against according to the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders ok let me go ahead and post a very uh, try to make this brief a short conclusion and we can open for a discussion alright so what I'm offering here uh, the Bible appears to be equating the end with a spiritual not the literal, the spiritual revelation of Christ. After the tribulation, that was cut short. The end came at the appointed time and seems to be directed primarily on the name of Christ. Many shall come in my name. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. He allows the, the, the locusts to destroy the body, the day of evil. So the name of Christ, that is the invisible church, as God has ceased to use this body to evangelize the world. Well, that has to be the case because after the tribulation, right, we read about the sun, moon, and stars being darkened. 
okay uh hold on one second